an 80-year-old woman with pseudoexfoliation and phacodenesis was referred for cataract surgery. A series of paracentesis is created, followed by tripan blue staining of the anterior capsule. This enhances the ability to see the uh, capsule structures at the time of the capsulotomy, but also later in the procedure should capsule support hooks be necessary. I prefer working through a 2.2 millimeter system uh, for its fluidic advantages. A 2-2 diamond blade uh, creates a, a corneal tunnel incision. Working with the cystotome, one can see the marked uh, weakness of the zonules uh, and wrinkles of the uh, capsule which follow uh, suit. Fortunately, however, I was able to create an adequately sized, placed, and centered anterior capsulotomy uh, aided by the uh, tripan blue. Multiple capsule folds, however, are noted as the capsulotomy proceeds, uh, indicating uh, the significant weakness of the zonules. Once the capsulotomy has been completed, I decided to use capsule support hooks. There are a number of uh, products uh, available for this purpose, but my current preference uh, is the MST hooks that have a continuous loop um, as a fa in that fashion. Uh, they are very kind to the capsule uh, anatomy and are unlikely to tear the capsule edge. The MST system comes with three hooks per package, and I place the three hooks 120 degrees apart, creating somewhat of a triangular appearance to the anterior uh, capsule. Copious hydrodissection is performed in order to free the adhesions between the cortex and the capsule so as not to additionally weaken zonules during the surgery. Given that the hooks uh, support the capsule, I can perform my standard chop phacoemulsification uh, without further weakness uh, or weakening of the zonules. Here, nuclear emulsification is carried out routinely. Uh, I opted to use a coaxial uh, cortex removal uh, given uh, its efficiency. Uh, However, at one point, I noticed that the zonules uh, inferiorly were loose for about one and a half clock hours. At this point, I called for a Henderson modified capsule tension ring, given that cortex was still present in the chamber. I also elected to switch from a coaxial to a bimanual IA system, as it can be more friendly to the zonule structures. The arrow indicates the area of zonule dehiscence inferiorly. Uh, the view is further enhanced by the tripan blue staining of the anterior capsule. Additional paracentesis uh, were made so that I could use a bimanual uh, cortical aspiration. Uh, I was able to remove all the cortex um, in the bimanual fashion uh, using additional visco and hydrodissection to both uh, expand the capsule bag and separate the cortex from the capsule. The capsule bag has now been fully emptied of its contents and a CTR is placed. I had called for the Henderson modification uh, to enhance my ability to remove cortex in the presence of the ring. However, um, given that the uh, Henderson ring was selected, I place it at this time instead of a standard ring. It has the same advantages. At this point, the hooks are removed from the capsule bag, and they can be removed either through the main incision uh, or through the paracentesis. I'm cleaning the subcapsular LECs with Shepard Corets. Um, and an instrument designed by the late Jack Singer. I think it is essential to remove LECs in order to prevent fibrosis 
in cases of weakened zonules. An Alcon single piece acrylic lens is then uh, positioned in the capsule bag using the Epsilon inserter and the uh, visco agent is removed again in a bimanual fashion uh, given the uh, status of the zonules. Once all the visco agent has been removed, intraocular pressures reestablish at physiologic levels and incision competence is tested with the use of point pressure and fluorescent dye. One can note slight jiggling of the lens at this stage of the surgery. However, centration is excellent. The incisions were noted to be watertight and surgery was completed.